Our next hymn is, O oh, Worship the King, All Glorious Above. One may ask, does a busy man of the world, an international businessman, have any time to think about God or worship God in hymns of worship? The composer of this hymn, O oh, Worship the King, was just such a successful man of the world, yet he found time to meditate on the greatness of God and wrote one of the greatest worship hymns in the English language. Robert, as his name is called, was also a very zealous Christian and a leader of the evangelical wing of his church. He maintained a strong interest in the missionary outreach of the church throughout his lifetime. Robert wrote the hymn, Oh, Worship the King, in 1833. The hymn was inspired by the book of Psalms 104, verse 1 to 7. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretched out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariots. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with a deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they flee. At the sound of your thunder, they take to flight. Please join the orchestra and, and choir as we sing the glorious majesty of our eternal King of Kings. him for this section is all hail the power of Jesus name in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other 
for there is none other name under the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And in Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 says this about Jesus. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. As you are here today, if you can believe on the name of Jesus, God will manifest his omnipotent power in your life in a special way in Jesus' name. It was originally written by Edward Peronet in 1779 and has since become as the national hymn of Christendom. Peronet was a man who was very passionate and desirous to glorify God in all of his life. But about 200 years after Perone wrote this hymn, E.P. Scott, a so-called a Christian missionary to India, saw an unusual looking tribesman on the street. And he asked where the man came from. He was told that the man was from a mountain tribe and came only once a year to the major city to trade. When Scott had to leave because of his health, the tribe's people escorted him 40 miles to where he could get other transportation. And to the glory of God, it was through Perone that God used to establish the gospel in the nation of India. God in his providence used it, inspired him about the power of Jesus' name to bring the gospel to this group of needy pagans and God's power is still able to work in our lives today if we believe in the powerful name of Jesus through our worship of Christ and exalting his great name lives can be impacted and changed for eternity and others can be led to worship him also as we join the choir and orchestra to sing the glorious hymn may our lives as well as our lips crown him Lord of all. Let's rise as we sing.
happy listening. <laughs>